damn, Angelina, it's so big. I bet people will talk about this a hundred years from now. Oh, oh my God. It's working. Oh, God. Angeline is an LA icon and a woman who rose to fame in the 80s through a series of billboards that started popping up all over town featuring a, a name, Angeline, this incredibly provocative woman who is beautiful and um, very, very provocative looking, and a phone number. And seemingly overnight, the billboards seemed to multiply until there were hundreds. And there were many, many different sightings of her. She would kind of zoom around town in this hot pink Corvette. She would sell merch of herself out of her car. She was kind of the original influencer. But the, the one thing about her was that she was kind of an enigma, and everyone had a different story about who she was, where she was from, how she was financing these billboards, and kind of what she represented, what she made them feel. But she kind of spread joy and hot pink positivity everywhere that she went. Um, and she's kind of done the impossible, which is maintain her relevance, her, her mystique, and her, and her mystery for decades. I grabbed the yellow pages, I closed my eyes, and I said, Find me the best printer in all the land, gods and fairies. You are the best, right? Oh, yeah, yes, of course. I play Harold Wallach, who uh, has a very successful big um, billboard company in LA at the time. And he is the person who Angeline comes to to get her image out there on the now very, very legendary billboards. Yeah. It can be hard when you become famous. A lot of people want to be a part of it, no matter what it takes. So they'll say and write just about anything. Well, the more we talk, the better I get to know you. The sooner I can publish. How's that? <laughs> you are such a Taurus. It's cute. Jeff Glazer is a journalist at The Hollywood Reporter. He loves LA. He loves all the weirdos that make up LA. And Angeline is very much at the top of the list for him. He's been trying to get uh, an interview with her for a long time, and he's driven by a desire to know who she really is and where she really came from. And that's what really motivates him through the story. My name is Max Allen, and I started making a documentary about Angeline in 2012. And as far as I know, I was the first person to discover the whole truth about Angeline. Max is a aspiring filmmaker who just graduated from college and has to prove that he is worthy to himself, to his family, and to Hollywood. So he decides to make a documentary and tries to make a documentary on Angeline. It's basically just me stealing from Jake Gyllenhaal and Zodiac. You are crazy! I'm done! Contrary to what people think, I'm actually very private. People should respect that. The first time I came across her, I was 13 in LA, and I saw one of her billboards out of the window of the Hertz rental car that I was in with my mom driving around to auditions. And I remember seeing this beautiful, powerful woman um, and just being captivated, like so much of LA. And by this point, she was very, very famous already. Um, but I was just discovering her on the billboards. And I remember I asked people like, who is this woman, Angeline, on all the billboards? And everyone would say, well, that's Angeline. She's the billboard queen. And I would say, but, but who is she? And everyone had a different story. And that's what I think is so wild about her. How can you be so famous, but have people know virtually nothing about you? I, I thought that that was so incredibly unique. Who is the real Angeline? Don't you like the not knowing? For me, I was so excited that it was not going to be a biopic. For me, this is kind of a kaleidoscopic narrative of all the mythologies and the people that have told stories about her, stories she has told about herself that often are quite contradictory. Um, and I was fascinated by the idea that she knows her power is in not dispelling any of those stories or correcting them, that it only goes to kind of further the water cooler conversation about her. So when you have somebody that is inspired by a real person, um, you obviously do the research, right? Watch everything she's ever been in repeatedly over and over, um, buy her meditation tapes on eBay and listen to them while you're taking pink bubble baths and start going around your house kind of um, 
painting your lips, pre you know, presenting them in a kissable way when you speak. Um, trying to imagine what it's like to be in a different body, um, to talk differently, to have a different voice, a different cadence, and to do it for 10,000 hours until it becomes, you know, a part of you um, and something that's quite easy to do. And then to be honored with, you know, raising my hand and saying, okay, I think I'd like to make a show about this and have people say yes, and then have artists of this level come in and get to work on me to make this transformation and take it really to bring it to life. It's a dream come true as an actor. It's not something that hardly ever happens and I, I feel humbled and excited that I got to do it.